Hello, thank you for joining me today. Today we are continuing to follow along with the Explore the Bible curriculum as we study the book of Proverbs. The title of today's lesson is Staying Sober, and it comes from Proverbs chapter 23, verse 17 through 21 and verse 29 through 35. The main point is this, God expects believers to be good stewards of the bodies that he has given them. Because God cares about our bodies, and he calls us to take care of them. Throughout our study in Proverbs, we've seen Solomon emphasize a truth found at the beginning of the book of Proverbs, in, ver in chapter 1, verse 7, which teaches us to fear the Lord. Fearing the Lord is, is our foundation for wise living. Fearing the Lord means having an ongoing reverence for God, an openness to God, and an obedience to God. That type of relationship with God means that we consistently welcome and submit to His control over our lives. In today's lesson, we will focus on a specific issue that is challenging for many people. Today's wisdom from Proverbs focuses on the use and abuse of alcohol. The wisdom it offers for us applies to any type of addictive behavior or substance abuse. So let's take a look at what God's Word has to say about it. But first, would you pray with me? God, thank you again for the opportunity to study your Word. Today's lesson may be very sensitive to some who are listening, so I pray that their hearts will be open to hear truth and encouragement from your Spirit. May we all be encouraged today to love you more and be willing to submit more of our lives to your wise ways. In Jesus' name, his precious name, I pray. Amen. Read with me in Proverbs chapter 23, starting in verse 17. Do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. There is surely a future hope for you and your hope will not be cut off. Listen, my son, and be wise, and set your heart on the right path. Do not join those who drink too much wine or gorge themselves on meat, for drunkards and gluttons become poor, and drowsiness will clothe them in rags. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaints? Who has needless bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? Those who linger over wine, who go to sample bowls of mixed wine. Do not gaze at wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. In the end, it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. Your eyes will see strange sights and your mind will imagine confusing things. You will be like one sleeping on the high seas, lying on top of the rigging. They hit me, you will say, but I'm not hurt. They beat me, but I don't feel it. When will I wake up so I can find another drink? We're going to look at four ideas from these Proverbs that address the issues of addictive behavior and substance abuse. The first idea is the promise. And it comes from verse 17 and 18. It says, Do not let your heart envy sinners, but always be zealous for the fear of the Lord. There is surely a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. Solomon continues to remind us, as he has before, that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Sometimes it's, it's very tempting to get caught up in sinful behavior. After all, sin appears to be enjoyable, and other people don't seem to be suffering any ill effects. But God's Word warns us that living in sin will lead ultimately to deep sorrow and misery. When we look to things instead of God for our hope and our security, we will find no hope and nothing secure. We will become like the foolish man who built his house on the sand in Matthew chapter 7, verse 26. 
instead of the solid foundation of godly wisdom found in Jesus Christ. But God promises us in James 4, 8, that if we will come near to God, he will come near to us. In his word, God promises to give us a hope and a future. And knowing that can help us overcome temptation and free us from being jealous of sinners. After all, God is trustworthy and he will not disappoint us. Romans 5, 5. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now the next idea is the petition. And it starts in verse 19. Listen, my son, and be wise, and set your heart on the right path. Do not join those who drink too much wine or gorge themselves on meat, for drunkards and gluttons will become poor, and drowsy, and drowsiness will clothe them in rags. Drunkenness and gluttony is displeasing to God because they are acts of idolatry. When we try to fill our need for security and comfort and deliverance with something other than God, that other thing becomes our God. When we let our hearts and our bodies and our minds be ruled by a substance, we become slaves to that thing and it becomes our idol. Romans 6.16 says, don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or obedience, which leads to righteousness. Drunkenness and gluttony are sinful behaviors that can take over a person's life. Drunkenness can lead to any number of negative or deadly results. And gluttony can lead to many serious physical and emotional problems. So instead, we need to show respect to God for the bodies that he has given us. They are good gifts from the Lord. So what about our friends who might be heavy drinkers or gluttons. Should we never associate with them again? Solomon's warning here doesn't mean that we should avoid all sinners at all the time. Jesus' example was to love the sinner and lead them to deliverance by accepting him as their Savior and Lord. But we need to be careful not to put ourselves in a situation where we could be tempted to follow their sinful ways. And that is especially true for anyone who struggles with a specific sin, such as drinking or gluttony. Now, the next idea that we see is the portrait. It's in verse 29 through 32. It says, who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaints? Who has needless bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? Well, those who linger over wine, who go to sample bowls of mixed wine. Do not gaze at wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. In the end, it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. Ironically, the very alcohol that people turn to for relief from their troubles causes even worse troubles for them. Just the physical effects alone can be devastating. Solomon mentions, too, needless bruises and bloodshot eyes. But modern medicine has discovered many other health issues that can arise from excessive drinking or drug abuse. Heart damage, liver damage, pancreatitis, stomach diseases, cancer, lung infections, sexual dysfunction, and diabetes complications. And that's just to name a few. There are also negative mental and emotional results from drinking alcohol excessively. Many people become so dependent on alcohol that they begin to suffer from alcoholism. Others suffer from behavioral changes that damage their relationships and even their employment opportunities. The list of harmful and unpleasant effects of alcohol and drugs on a person's body and soul are endless. Solomon pleads with his son, and us to avoid tasting or even looking at that stuff. It's always dangerous when we allow our attention to be focused on sin or temptation. Anytime we get fixated on a sin or temptation, we are putting ourselves in danger of committing 
that sin. Sometimes we rationalize things and we say, oh, it's just a little taste or I can control it. But what we are really doing is we're playing with fire. Solomon says to stay away from it and don't even look at it because when it pulls you in, it will bite like a snake and poison you like a viper. Now, the last idea to look at today is the problem. And it starts in verse 35. Your eyes will see strange sights and your mind will imagine confusing things. You will be like one sleeping on the high seas, lying on top of the rigging. They hit me, you will say, but I, I'm not hurt. They beat me, but I don't feel it. When, I wake, when will I wake up so I can find another drink? The things that Solomon describes in these verses can apply to any illicit drug use as well as alcohol. Solomon is describing the effects of the addictive nature of many drugs and mind-altering substances. What alcohol and drugs do to you may give you a high at the moment, but what really happens is that you are losing control. In verse 34, Solomon says, being influenced by these addictive substances will be like sleeping on a ship at sea. It tosses back and forth. But the word used for lying on top of the rigging is describing trying to sleep on a single rope while out at sea. It's a hopeless task and you will fall and crash. Your life can be so overtaken by the influence of these substances that you can hurt yourself and others. And what's even more sad is that you may never realize the damage that you've done until it's too late. Everyone, everyone needs to take these warnings seriously, especially those who struggle with these addictions. We all need to be careful not to underestimate the grip that it can have on someone's life. And we need to recognize the severe consequences that it can bring. But anyone struggling with these types of problems can find hope in Jesus. Jesus said in John chapter 8, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. If you will come to Jesus confessing your sins and trusting him for the forgiveness of your sins, he will set you free. The only true freedom and deliverance that can be found from addictive behaviors and alcohol abuse is found in Jesus Christ. He is the Savior, and he will deliver you from any sin. Thank you for being with me today to study God's Word. I pray that the lesson today was challenging and encouraging to you. Remember to pray for those around you that may be struggling. And let's all do our best to listen and obey God's wise instructions. May God bless you this week.